Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, your number one source for income-oriented investing. I got a special guest with me today, first time on the channel, Mr. Jonathan Shel Shellen, who is the COO and portfolio manager at Crane Shares. How's it going, Jonathan? Th thanks so much for taking the time. Adrian, thanks for having me on. Real pleasure. Of course, and we're going to talk about um, Clip, the Clip ETF, KWeb ETF, of course, because it's related, but also two new ETFs related to KWeb. So uh, bear with me here, Jonathan, just a, a, a second. In case my audience doesn't know or hasn't viewed the first Q&A that we've done uh, with James, another portfolio manager at Crane Shares, about the Clip ETF. As you know, my channel is all about income-oriented investing. So I'm just going to share my screen to do kind of do a, a little recap and just remind the audience in case they, they forgot or they're, they're, they're newer to the channel and haven't uh, seen this video before. Clip is a very interesting covered call ETF on the U.S. stock market. This is uh, U, these are U.S. listed uh, ETFs. It's called the Crane Shares China Internet and Covered Call Strategy ETF. So this ETF basically does covered calls on a ex very, very, very popular and your flagship ETF, KWeb. So KWeb is the Crane Shares CSI China Internet ETF. It's basically, it's very, very popular. It's got over 5 billion in assets, and it's kind of like an index-based ETF that gives you access to the top technology companies based in China. So Tencent, Alibaba, those are those are big holdings, for example. So we're going to talk a lot about uh, Clip and KWeb because Clip is based on KWeb, but uh, this is definitely a flagship fund, a very easy way for uh, Americans or Canadians to get access to the Chinese tech sector with the U.S. listed funds. And of course, Clip basically does covered calls on KWeb. So um, let's start with that. So Clip is definitely of big interest to my audience. Um, I did a video on it where I uh, interviewed uh, James, another portfolio manager. We talked about the strategy. I don't want to get into the details of that, but it's been over a year. Tell me how satisfied you guys are with the performance of Clip. Have you learned any lessons? Are you happy with it? Go ahead. Sure. Well, we're very pleased with the performance. Um, and there's two different ways that you can look at Clip. One is in terms of the monthly income that it's producing. Right. We've now been managing Clip for 14 full months. Mm -hmm. We launched it in February of 2023. And the average distribution, the average payout each month has been about 4.3%. And it's been pretty stable. It moves around a little bit. It's moved around from, say, 3.7% all the way up to 5.1%. But we've been paying out a distribution rate that's averaged in the, the low to mid fours. And what that represents is the option income that we actually earn. So we buy KWeb, we write uh, call options on KWeb, and then we pay that income out at the end of each month. And so it's been fairly uh, stable over this period of time. And so we're very pleased that the outcome for distributions has been very much in line with expectations. Yeah. Now, the, the, sorry, go ahead. I, no, no, please, please. I was going to say, yeah, the monthly income is very, very, very high. Obviously, it fluctuates based on the volatility. Um, but when I spoke with James, we confirmed or he confirmed that you are writing uh, at the money calls, which mm -hmm. are, you know, very, uh, you know, in quotes, aggressive calls or the, they're, they're very high in premiums on KWeb. And you are distributing out all the income, hence the very, right. very high monthly income. Is it still the case? Is, this, is the cover cost strategy still the same? That would be my first question. Yeah, so the strategy is still the same. We haven't changed anything in terms of process since we've launched the strategy. And what's particularly appealing, and the reason we built it this way is because, as you highlighted early on, KWeb is very popular. It's a five plus billion dollar fund. And so a lot of our investors were looking not for the growth component of China internet, but the pure income component. And what we've seen now that Clip's been around for over a year is that a lot of our investors blend the two. So they're actually okay. building custom growth and income strategies. That way they can get some upside and then some income. Um, so we feel very good about our decision to make this a pure income play, recognizing that a lot of investors can customize on their own if they want a little bit more growth. Um, the thing that's been challenging though, is that, you know, and this applies to any covered call strategy. When you, when you have a covered call strategy, you're substituting uncertain upside for a stream of income, but you still maintain the downside. Yes. Unlike U.S. tech, which has done extremely well, China tech has been challenged over the last couple of years. And so in 2023, we saw KWeb decline in value. KWeb, uh, over the period that we were running Clip uh, last year, KWeb declined by over 20 percent. 
So the good news is that CLIP has been outperforming KWEB to the tune by 30 plus percent because of the option income. Um, but at the same time, we were disappointed that KWEB had a very difficult year in 2023. I was just going to ask you uh, those questions. So yes, Clip um, obviously has outperformed KWeb. So uh, you know, I said this before on my channel many times. That the perfect circumstance for a covered call strategy, especially at the money calls, is when there's literally no growth. When when the underlying, which is KWeb, is not having a good time or it's flat. And this is exactly what's been happening. If you look at, if you just compare Clip's performance versus KWeb, KWeb is negative. Clip is in the positive. So. This just proves that, you know, covered call strategies do shine during, uh, you know, flat or down when the underlying is flat or, or down, which is a K web in this case. And you could, you know, I, I recommend my, my audience to go check out their performance on your website. Um, they're there. But if I just share my screen real, real, real quick here, if you look at the performance of clip, uh, and we'll look at the average annualized. If you just look in the last one year and even since inception, they're positive. But if you look at the uh, really tough time, like you mentioned, I'm going to ask you a little bit about that later, that KWeb has been having in the last year, uh, you could see that it, it is negative here. Sorry, I'll go to the average annualized. It is, it is negative. Um, so yeah, Clip is definitely, like you alluded to, outperforming uh, KWeb, which, which makes sense because KWeb has been flat. Now, one question or, or, or a concern I get, I'm sure you guys get it all the time, is that uh, looking at the stock chart, right? The stock price of Clip, even though it has a positive return, because of course you have to remember when you're looking at stock charts, you, you don't see the income coming in. You, you you see a down slope for Clip as well. So what would you respond to investors who are concerned about the declining stock price of, of Clip? Yes, so it really goes back to your original point, Adrian. If KWeb is flat or up, uh, Clip is actually going to be flat. Uh, because we are paying everything out, so you don't expect CLIP to necessarily rise in terms of its net asset value. But the ideal circumstance is that KWeb is flat to rising each month, kind of like we saw in, uh, Feb in uh, March, actually. Last month, KWeb was up about 2.4%, and CLIP was up a little over 4%, uh, recognizing the option income that we earn. That is a typical kind of month that you would expect when KWeb is positive. So a lot of what we've seen in this degradation in the clip price is really because the underlying uh, security has declined in value. As yeah. KWeb finds its footing, and I'm sure we'll talk about it, you would expect to see more stability in the price or the volatility of the price of clip. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. So you guys, unlike, let's say, QILD, you're not reinvesting a portion of the income. You are yeah. giving it completely out to the investor to do whatever they, they wish to do, whether it's reinvest all of it, some of it, a portion of it, whatever. That's per that's personally my preference. I like to be given the choice of what I do, but you are giving the all the income out. Okay, that makes perfect sense. So, And, and, and that is something that is worth highlighting as a risk. I had this very experience myself. I was an early investor in Clip. And I waited three months to look at it. I was very pleased. I'm a portfolio manager, so I see how we're paying out. But I forgot to go to my account and reinvest the money. So after three months, I had 14, you know, call it 14% of what I originally started with sitting in cash. And I thought, geez, I need to go and put this money to work. Um, I reinvested it back into Clip, but obviously you have choice when you have that income. And I think a lot of investors like the ability of having that cash at their disposal to do with as they wish. I certainly do. I mean, we're talking about very, very high yield. So it's very interesting on your website right now. You have it at about 49% yield. Of course, this is going to change month to month because it's based on the volatility of KWeb. So um, perfect. So thanks for that. That's a great update on, on Clip. It's a fairly popular ETF in, in my community, especially because it's so niche because it has access to KWeb, which is a harder sector to get, you know, the, the Chinese technology sector, which I'm going to ask you about now. So what are your thoughts on KWeb's recent performance? Why do you think it's, it's underperforming U.S. tech stocks or the NASDAQ 100, for example, lately? Uh, what's your overall sentiment on the sector? Because you guys are experts in this sector. Absolutely. Well, so, so the good news is that the companies that are represented within the sector um, are really starting to show strong earnings growth, uh, strong buyback behavior. And a lot of this is driven by the consumer, right? The Chinese consumer is finally starting to come back. What's important to, to realize is that COVID had different impacts throughout the world. In the U.S., for example, during COVID, the U.S. spent 36% of GDP on stimulus. They gave everybody money. 
Uh, people went out and they spent. And uh, the policies in the US, even though they were somewhat restrictive with respect to COVID, were not nearly restrictive as the zero COVID policy in China. So during COVID in China, you had consumers saving all of their money. They didn't have large stimulus checks. China only spent about 6% of GDP on jumpstarting the economy. And they really only ended zero COVID about a year ago. So China's economy in terms of coming back is about one to two years behind the US. So it's created this very interesting uh, disparity where different valuation metrics for tech in China, PE, price to book, peg ratios, all the typical valuations standards, many of them are at half of the US levels. Uh, PEs for US tech are in the 30s. PEs for K-Web are you know, around 17. So wow, the companies half. are very attractive. And, and here's a fun fact. Um, I, I thought I would share this with, with you and your audience. Guess how many, if you sold uh, Amazon as a company, you know, large, obviously uh, valuable firm, if you sold Amazon, how many of the 30 plus K-Web companies could you buy with those proceeds? Zero. No, you could buy all K-Web companies. Re so oh, okay. If you sold Amazon. Yeah, I no, but I think you had it right. I think you had it the other way. If you sold Amazon and you received 1.7 trillion or whatever its market cap is, you could buy all of the companies in K-Web, which okay, is so you're, you're Alibaba saying, and Baidu and Tencent. And, you're, you're demonstrating how much you guys feel that it's undervalued right now compared to the U.S. Um, sector, right? I mean, that P, that's almost double the P.E. ratio. And in case my audience doesn't know what that is, your newer investors, it's priced their earnings. So the higher it is, the more at a premium, I guess you could say the stocks are. So uh, it's almost like K-Web is pretty much, uh, you know, ha almost half the P.E. ratio as the overall U.S. tech, tech sector. So six billion dollars left over if you sold amazon and bought all these companies and yet the earnings that these companies generate in yeah. -Web have been about 2x what amazon generated last quarter so there's this disconnect and there's two ways to look at it one way to look at it is to say the u.s tech market may be a little overvalued yeah. or the china tech market is undervalued or it's a little bit of both usually yeah. it's a little bit of both so i'm not here to say the U.S. tech market is at a bubble that's got to burst. But I can tell you that from a traditional measure of how portfolio managers look at companies, which is valuation and fundamentals and sentiment, it's a very attractive time for China Internet. And your explanation makes sense that you feel maybe China's one or two years behind. And I'm assuming, you know, you said you mentioned the stimulus. I'm assuming they didn't get as much stimulus or if at all there. We know that exactly. completely different ideologies and, and, and governments. So, uh, okay, so what I'm hearing is it's very, very undervalued. And you could tell just by looking at K-Web and the way I, I look at it is, you know, every dog has its day. Sometimes you do good, sometimes you do bad. So I always try to encourage my audience, if they're hunting for sectors, look at the ones that are, you know, the ugly ducklings, I, I like to call them, because those are always the ones that are have good um, potential. Um, yeah. So my final question, just relating to Clip and, and K-Web, do, do you guys still feel, I think James, I talked about it with James, you still feel like having a mix of Clip and K-Web is probably the best combination? Um, or maybe just you could get Clip, all of Clip, but put it on Drip. What do you guys feel is like the ultimate um, strategy to play with K-Web and Clip. And, and speaking of that, I, there's, a, there's another two ETFs related to K-Web, which we're going to talk about right after this. So. Sure. sure. So now that we've had a series of investors in Clip, yeah. we've actually heard that the answer is both of those things that you discussed. Some investors want growth and income because the income is so high from Clip. They say, well, geez, I don't need four to five percent a month. I only need two percent a month. So, but I am looking for the upside of K-Web. So some of those investors will go 50-50 K-Web clip, but we do know that there are other investors and maybe your audience is like this, where they combine clip with other covered call strategies, with high yield bonds, with dividend paying stocks. So they're looking for a very valuable component as part of an income producing strategy. In that case, you don't need to own K-Web. You can own clip by itself. So I think it really comes down to what your objective is. And we're seeing both of these groups be very dominant investors in the clip strategy. Yeah, and that's what I love about full flexibility. Honestly, that's what I love where fund managers decide, you know what, we're going to give all the income out. You guys decide what to do with it. And, and 
there's literally a million different combinations to do. I, I know a lot of people who will hold clip, take all that dividend and re put it in KWeb. So it's like they're mm -hmm. buying three KWeb shares or, or doing a half-half mix or just dripping all of KWeb or dripping half of it and reinvesting the rest in something else or spending it. So I, I love that you're giving everything out, you're giving the investor the choice uh, and there, there's no shortage of, of ways to play this. So. Um, thanks for thanks for all those answers. And you guys recently introduced two brand new ETFs related to uh, KWeb. I'll just share my screen uh, real quick here, just so everyone could see the the stock symbol. So you have KBUF or KBUF, which is the Crane Shares ninety percent KWeb defined outcome January twenty twenty six, and then you have the same thing, but a hundred percent defined right. outcome, which is KPRO. So please explain these ETFs. What does it mean, defined income? Because uh, I was a little confused at what this means. Uh, how does it relate to KWeb, et cetera? Sure. So leveraging the experience that we have with using options in a strategy with Clip, we started talking to a lot of investors and many of them had this concern, one that we talked about briefly at the beginning, which was KWeb's ability to decline in value. Right. And so we started having investors saying, geez, it's been a rough two years. And while I understand that there's all these factors that make KWeb very attractive going forward, how do I protect the downside? So these defined outcome strategies are really designed to give you upside, not income, but upside potential, but with downside protection. And the downside protection is expressed in the name of the funds, right? So the 100% the that we talked about in KPRO uh, indicates that you can't lose more than your initial value when you invest when the fund is launched. And with KBUF, the 90% reflects that there's a 10% buffer, or uh, a buffer that protects you against losses beyond the first 10%. Interesting. Now, okay. yeah, so, so it's, it is interesting because it does provide this downside protection. However, there's no free lunch in investing, right? You can't have, I mean, if you can have the same KWeb upside, which could be very significant, right? There have been periods since we've run KWeb over the last 10 years where KWeb has been up over 100% in two years. So these are two year strategies that we've built, but they limit the upside. So for example, with KPRO, if you buy KPRO, you're protected on the downside, but you're limited to a maximum upside of 22.69% before fees. And then with KBUF, if you're willing to take that 10% downside, you can go as high up as 41.2% before fees. And that's an interesting trade-off, right? It's basically yeah, it is. Yeah, I, I see that on the, the website, by the way. Those It makes sense, the percentages, and sorry to cut you off. I see it right here. It's right in the description. So you see the 90% one, you're, you're getting a 10%. So let me just reiterate if, if I understand correctly. If sure. I don't, please feel free to call me a, 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 an idiot or, or whatever. So the, the KBUF one, you have the 90% one. So you have you, you could only go down 10%. There, there, there's a 90% buffer, essentially. Yes. And, but you could only participate or it's capped 41.1% uh, of the upside of KWeb, if any. Correct. And, and Correct. am I safe to assume that it's, uh, it expires or that's until January 2026? That's where the date comes in? That's right. So this outcome period is measured from the beginning of the fund to January of 26. So you can't achieve this outcome, this defined outcome, unless you hold it to the end. And that's right. very important. Now, the good news is it's an ETF, so you can buy it today and sell it tomorrow, mm -hmm. but you're not going to achieve those results unless you hold it through the outcome period. And what we also do on the website towards the bottom is we have some real-time graphs that show you what the remaining cap and the buffer is. So right there, you can see the starting value and the current value. Because KWeb has okay. gone up since we've launched it, you, you now below the 41% cap, you know, 3% of that has already been earned since the beginning. Right. So left in the cap is in 41.2. It's about 37.35, but we update this on our website every single day. So it's very clear. You know, this is a very cool idea. So basically let, let's just take an example. Let's say within the time period, which expires in January, 2026, KWeb doubles. Okay. It goes up a hundred percent. So with right. this ETF KBuff, you're basically going to capture 41.2%. And the other one, you're only going to capture 22.69%. But if the opposite happens and KWeb K K crashes, let's say another 20, 30%, you have that massive protection 
uh, obviously a lot more protection. You know, you're giving up more upside for more protection, right? Exactly. And that's the difference between the two. So pretty cool, um, pretty cool. Yeah, and, um, and it allows us to have a suite. Now, if you think about kind of going back to our original discussion, we had the uh, K-Web, pure K-Web is all growth, yeah. flip, all income. And now you have something in between because look, the challenge in investing is when you think about growth, income, and protection, you can't have all three at once. Yeah, I wish there was a way to do it, but you can get two out of three most of the time. And so that's what we've done. You know, K-Web is pure growth, Clip is pure income, and K-Pro and K-Buff are some combination of growth and protection. And okay. our clients are really happy with, uh, with these constructs. So uh, two questions. So uh, the, the two new ones, uh, K-Pro and K-Buff, will, will they have monthly income at all or they're just going to be no income? Okay, so it's just a, a, a growth style like K-Web, with, but with more downside protection, you're capping your upside? Yes, correct. Okay. And, and, and what you can do, much like we talked about blending K-Web and Clip, you can also blend Clip with these funds and you'll right. have even less volatility on the downside. Makes sense. And my final question, how are you achieving that protection? I'm assuming it has to do with options. It does. So much like with Clip, how we're selling at the money calls with K Pro and K Buff, we're selling out of the money calls to cap that upside and using the proceeds to buy puts. And with K Pro, okay. we're buying at the money puts and with K Buff, we're buying out of the money puts. So it's a very clean uh, structure. It's a very easy structure to understand if you look at the holdings. And I can tell you what's interesting is Adrian, sophisticated banks have been providing similar uh, tools to this. They call them structured products. They've mm -hmm. been doing structured products on K-Web for years and years, except when you buy them in a bank, um, they tend to cost more and they don't, they don't tend to have liquidity and so on. So we thought this was a real interesting innovation. These are listed on the New York Stock Exchange and very easy to purchase and sell, just like you would with Clip and K-Web. Okay, and it looks like the uh, the MERs or the total fees they're uh, just like Clip at ninety five basis points, right? For Capro and Kbuff. Correct. Our management fee is twenty five basis points, but you have to take into account the fee that we also earn from Kweb. Right. Okay. So the whole the whole thing is, is ninety five basis points. Okay. Perfect. Which is very pretty pretty reasonable for an actively managed fund. So uh, very interesting. So now, you know, you had K-Web, now you clip, now you have another two. So you actually have four options to play uh, or, or combinations. I'm sure now there's all kinds of combinations you could do. It's really up to the investor uh, um, to, to figure out the best way uh, to, to get access to essentially K-Web or the tech, the Chinese tech um, uh, sector, if that's what you're interested in. So that, that's all the questions I had. I think it's very, very clear. I, I, I you know, at, at first, when I first saw the two new ETFs, I was a little confused, but if you actually read and, and with your explanation, it's very, very, very clear now. So it should be uh, very easy for my audience to understand. So thanks again, Jonathan. I, I, I really appreciate it. We'll, we'll keep track of Crane Shares. If you guys have any more income oriented products, uh, please uh, let me know because that's what my audience is primarily invested in. So I'll, I'll give you the floor in case you have any anything else you want to mention to, to, to the audience or uh, any any final thoughts that you well, have? I, I just want to thank you for your time today and certainly your audience. We know that many of them are investors in CLIP and we're excited to share these new funds with them and we hope that they find ways to incorporate them into their overall investment strategy. So thank you to you and thank you to uh, your listeners. Yeah, and, and thank you to you too because a CLIP is now my go-to perfect example, uh, to be Absolutely. honest, of how a covered call strategy performs really, really well and behaves as it's supposed to during, oh, I, I usually say during a flat or down market, but with a product that's, or the underlying that's flat or down. And as you could see, it wildly outperforms the underlying. So you guys are obviously doing a good job with that and looking forward to new products and hope you uh, come back on the channel again. Fabulous, would love to do it. Thanks All so right. much. Thanks for your time. Take care, uh, Jonathan.